Mary Ellen Mark might be one of the most influential photographers ever to have lived. Under her lens, the unseen and unheard stories of society were brought to light. Her storytelling has forever changed the course of street and documentary photography. My favorite photographs, and I think historically the pictures that I love, are the photographs that are about reality. Mary Ellen Mark's work transcended the traditional boundaries of street and documentary photography by infusing it with a deeply artistic sensibility. Her ability to capture the human condition in all its rawness and complexity while maintaining a profound sense of aesthetic beauty has elevated these genres to new heights. It's a challenge to work on the street and um, it's hard. I think it's the hardest photography to do is street photography because you have to really think on your feet. This video is about capturing iconic images, the life of Mary Ellen Mark and why photographers have been captivated by her ability to reveal the extraordinary in the ordinary, giving the voice to the voiceless. When Mary Ellen Mark was 22 years old, she received her Bachelor of Fine Arts in Painting and Art History. However, a year later, her life took a different turn. She was a student at the Annenberg School for Communication at the University of Pennsylvania, and it was there, amidst the creative buzz of the school, that Mary Ellen discovered photography. The second she picked up a camera and went out on the street, she was hooked. The camera opened up a world of possibilities. All the images she could capture, all the lives she could enter, all the people she could meet, and all the stories she could tell. It was then that Mary Ellen's life changed forever. She realized there was no turning back and that she was meant to be a photographer. In the 1960s, Miss Mark embarked on her early projects that would shape her unique style and approach to photography. She was awarded a Fulbright scholarship to go to Turkey, which became her first significant exploration into the world of photography. One of her first impactful images she captured was this one of a young girl in eastern Turkey. This experience in Turkey was her first real immersion into the discipline of photography wandering around and recording the essence of the people and their culture through these captured images. After returning from Turkey, Mark started taking pictures on movie sets. This was a transformative period in her career. I used to work on movie sets a lot and learned an incredible amount. My greatest visual influences are films. The images of great filmmakers have always influenced me tremendously and inspired me. I don't like to use the word influence because I really think you have to take your own pictures, but someone like Fellini or Bergman, the depth of their images and the emotions of their images are amazing. This experience taught Mark about the importance of having a point of view and expressing it in her photographs. Whether you are photographing a fork in a still life or a street scene, you should be an interpreter, not just an observer. Think about how you frame the picture, how close you are, what angle you choose and where the light hits the subject. Is it light or dark? I don't think you are ever an objective observer. By making a frame, you are being selective. Then you edit the pictures you want published and you are being selective again. You develop a point of view that you want to express. You try to go into a situation with an open mind, but then you form an opinion and you express it in your photographs. It is very important for a photographer to have a point of view. That contributes to a great photograph. In addition to her work on movie sets, Mark's photography also captured the essence of 1960s. She documented the era's protests, world of contests or lives of heroin addicts. They all laid the foundation for her career, setting the stage for the significant work she would go on to create in the decades that followed. When I started working as a still photographer on film sets, there was a lot more freedom than there is today. The set was an atmospheric place. There was something great and exciting about seeing a director on the set and behind the camera. I would often have several weeks of free access to photograph everything behind the scenes. I was able to take candid photographs in a way that would be virtually impossible now with green screens, blue screens and video assists. In the 1970s, Mary Ellen Mark's career took a significant turn as she began to work on major projects that would define her legacy. One of her most notable works during this period was a work on movie sets, including the iconic One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. 
In this photo, she captured the cast gathered together after a scene, shouting at each other and reacting to each other. Jack Nicholson leading the picture made it work, but there was so much going on with people looking in different directions and reacting to each other. According to Mark, you must consider the entire frame when composing your shot and not just the area where your subject is located and ensure that every space is used intentionally. You have to aim for a layered image rather than a cluttered one. A layered image is visually coherent, it organizes the frame and adds depth. The distinction between an image that works and one that doesn't often lies in the background. The elements included in the background are just as crucial as those in the foreground. Sometimes the background can compete with the subject, so it's essential to balance these elements carefully. This period of Mark's career set the stage for her next major project, Ward 81. From the chaotic energy of movie sets, Mark found herself drawn to a different kind of story. While working on the movie, she met Dr. Dean Brooks, the director of the Oregon State Hospital where the film was shot. He gave her a tour of the women's maximum security ward and she decided to come back and photograph there. Mark returned to the hospital as a documentarian. She lived in the hospital and focused her lens on Ward 81. Over the course of 36 days, Ms. Mark immersed herself in the lives of the women of Ward 81, capturing their daily struggles and moments of raw humanity. Her lens did not flinch from the harsh realities of mental illness, but also found beauty and resilience in the most unlikely of places. This project, more than any other, showcased Mark's ability to connect with her subjects on a deeply human level, breaking down barriers to reveal the person behind the patient. Following her work with Ward 81, Mary Ellen Mark embarked on a project that would take her to the bustling streets of Mumbai, India. She had first visited Falkland Road, known for its inexpensive brothels, in the late 1960s. The women lived in houses referred to as cages due to the bars on the front doors. Struck by the raw and unfiltered life on Falkland Road, she vowed to return and document it. About 10 years later, I convinced Geo magazine to send me. I stayed up in a hotel at night and went to Falkland Road during the day until late in the evening. At first, it was really hard. I got garbage and slurs thrown at me and my wallet was stolen, but that did not deter me. I went back every day. I didn't want the women to think that I had given up or was afraid. Mark's persistence paid off. After a week of walking up and down the street, the women started becoming used to her presence. She knew she needed to take the next step and photograph life inside the brothels. It was a challenging task, but Mark was determined. One evening, I walked inside of one of them. Each building on the road had several rooms, and each room was its own brother with its own madame. Between 4 and 12 girls worked in each brothel. The first time I went in, everybody screamed and ran. I went back the next day to more of the same. Finally, I made friends with Madame Soraya. Once she accepted me, the doors were open. The Falkland Road project was a departure from Mark's usual black and white photography. I would have preferred to shoot the story in black and white, but the magazine insisted on color. In the end, I'm glad they did. Working in Colchrome was a great learning experience. I really learned how to compose with it. If you are working in color, you have to design your frame around it. Color must be part of the statement. It can't be a black and white picture that happens to be in color. The vibrant colors of the rooms and the women's clothes worked in Mark's favor. The saturated hues were an integral part of the women's self-expression and the atmosphere of Falkland Road. Mary Ellen Mark was always trying to make pictures that went beyond a story. She wanted every picture to be iconic. She wanted to elevate the subject beyond their moment and circumstances. She thought in terms of individual images rather than a photo essay. For her, photography was about capturing one great image at a time. In the 1980s, Mary Ellen Mark continued her exploration of the human condition, focusing on subjects that were often overlooked or, as she said, the unfamous. One of her most notable projects during this period was a work with Mother Teresa and Charity. Mark's photographs of Mother Teresa and her work with the poor and sick in India are some of her most powerful and moving images. These photographs, taken with a deep sense of empathy and respect, 
captured the compassion and selflessness of Mother Teresa and her fellow nuns, as well as the harsh realities faced by those they served. She was also asked to work at the charity in order to truly experience what it felt like to serve the dying. This request led to Miss Mark putting down her camera and immersing herself in the work, feeding and bathing the dying and experiencing the harsh realities of their lives firsthand. Her diary entries from this time revealed her deep emotional engagement with the people she served and photographed. She wrote about the difficulty of witnessing such suffering, the smell of death and her feeling of helplessness. Yet she also expressed a sense of compulsion to return, to bear witness to the lives of those less fortunate. Another major project was her work photographing Tiny, a young girl living on the streets of Seattle. Mark's project on Tiny began as an assignment for Life's magazine about street children in America in the early 1980s. This was a part of a large body of work called Streetwise and also a film her husband Martin Bell made. The goal was to document the lives of homeless and runaway teenagers. Mark followed Tiny's life for many years, capturing her struggles and resilience in the face of adversity. Tiny, whose real name is Erin, was a standout character from the very beginning. Tiny was only 13, but she dressed like an adult. She lived intermittently with her mother and on the street, surviving as a prostitute. Tiny's life fascinated Mark, prompting her to follow and document Tiny's life for over 30 years and capture Tiny's transformation from a street child to a mother of 10 children. To create a successful portrait, several elements need to align. The composition of the shot, the backdrop, the subject expression and timing. There are times when you might nail the visual layout but miss the crucial moment or the essence of the subject and sometimes it's the other way around. However, the moment and the content are always paramount. A powerful gesture such as positioning of girls' hands can be a defining moment that makes or breaks the image. Following her extensive work with Tiny, Mary Ellen Mark embarked on another significant project in the mid-1980s, this time focusing on Dam Family. The Dam Family Project was a deeply personal and intimate exploration of a family living on the fringes of society. Mary Ellen Mark first encountered the Dam Family in 1987 during an assignment for Life magazine. The family was living in their car at the time and Mark followed them for 10 days, capturing their daily struggles and moments of fleeting joy. In 1994, Mark decided to revisit the family. She found them living in the high desert outside of Los Angeles. The family had grown with new faces adding to the complexity of their situation. From the raw, gritty reality of the Dam family, Mark's lens then turned to a completely different world, one filled with a unique blend of chaos and beauty, the Indian Circus. Miss Mark's fascination with the Indian circuses was a long-standing one, dating back to her first trip to India. She was drawn to the small town circus, a world that was slowly disappearing and one that stood in stark contrast to the modern world. She was not interested in capturing the spectacle from the audience's point of view, but rather she wanted to document the lives of the people when they weren't performing for the public. She spent six months on the Indian Circus project, during which she visited 18 different circuses. The circuses varied in size, some being very small while others were quite large. This project, much like her other ones, showcased Mark's remarkable ability to fully immerse herself in the worlds she photographed, capturing their essence with an unflinching honesty. Her work on the Indian Circus project represented a continuation and evolution of her style and themes, further solidifying her legacy as a master storyteller through her lens. However, making a great picture is making a great picture. Mary Ellen believed that making a great picture is all about the skill and the vision of the photographer, not about the location or the subject. She thought it was too easy to rely on exoticism of foreign place or a costume. She knew that even though you might be working in a spectacular environment, that alone wouldn't make the picture. She believed that a truly great picture must go beyond that. As the new decades dawned, Mary Ellen Mark continued to explore the themes that had defined her work in the 1980s, but with a renewed focus and fresh perspective. 
The 1990s saw her delve deeper into the complexities of human relationships and individual identities as evidenced by her work on the Twins and Problem Child projects. The Twins project was a fascinating exploration of the unique bond and similarities between twins. She was inspired to take pictures of twins throughout her 40 years of photographing, seizing every opportunity to capture their likeness. Her interest led her to the Twin Days Festival in Twinsburg, Ohio, an annual gathering of several thousand pairs of twins. Her first trip to Twinsburg was in 1998, and she found the experience visually amazing. Mark realized that the most powerful way to photograph the twins would be to use 20 by 24 Polaroid camera. This camera could show in precise detail not only how much twins are alike, but the subtle qualities that often make them quite different. The project required an incredible amount of production. In August 2001, Two ones and one truck carried a crew of 12 people, a lot of equipment and a huge Polaroid camera from New York to Ohio. A tent was erected to precise specifications on the festival grounds. This project was not without its challenges. All the components of the Polaroid 20x24 camera were separated. A negative roll, a positive roll and the chemical developer pods were delivered from a chain driven train. Over the years, this chain system wore down and became less and less precise. By the early 2000s, they only dared to put one pot in at a time. Putting two pots could result in two pots being thrown at once, causing disaster of an image and requiring several minutes of cleaning up. The 2000s marked another significant period in Mary Ellen's career, with her prom project standing out as a notable endeavor. It was a result of Miss Mark's fascination with the rituals, costumes and partner choices associated with proms. She saw it as an opportunity to explore these elements closely, again using 20x24 Polaroid camera. This camera's ability to capture precise details was crucial in portraying the unique moments and emotions of prom goers. Mary Ellen Mark's approach to photographing multiple people was meticulous, ensuring that all expressions, gestures and special arrangements worked together to create a compelling image. She often instructed her subjects not to smile or not to look at her or look down, depending on the desired effect. The project was challenging due to the constraints of the Polaroid camera. The film was expensive and there was no room for post-production. Each shot had to be perfect, requiring careful consideration of lighting setup and other details. Despite these challenges, Mark managed to create a diverse body of work that avoided monotony and kept the viewer engaged. It was a significant milestone in her career, demonstrating her mastery of storytelling through photography and her ability to bring her subjects to life in a way that resonated with viewers. Mary Ellen Mark left us in 2015. Her career was a profound journey through the depth of human experience captured through the lens of her camera. Over five decades she crafted a remarkable narrative that spawned continents and themes, always with a deep understanding and empathy for her subjects. Her photographs, whether they depicted street children in Seattle, prostitutes in Mumbai or prom goers in America were marked by a raw honesty and a deep connection with her subjects. Miss Mark didn't merely observe her subjects, she engaged with them, earning their trust and capturing their lives with an intimacy that was both revealing and respectful. This approach allowed her to delve beneath the surface, revealing the complexities and contradictions of human existence. I didn't have the happiest home life or childhood, so I think that gave me a feeling of justice and passion for people who don't have all the breaks. I think it was important to me to be free and wander the world and not have a family. I don't have kids. I think if you don't come from a happy home, maybe you don't want to tie yourself down. I always wanted to be completely free, even from the time that I was like 7 or 8 years old. I remember walking home from grade school thinking, when am I going to get out of here? I've got to be free. So 
Freedom was always a major thought for me, a major plan. Mary Ellen Mark's career was a journey of exploration and discovery driven by an insatiable curiosity about the human experience. Her photographs are a reflection of her belief in the power of the image to tell stories, evoke emotions and make the unfamous scene. Another photographer who dedicated his life to documentary photography is Joel Marovitz. Known for his vibrant street photography and pioneering work in color, Merowitz, like Mark, has a unique ability to capture the essence of everyday life, making the ordinary extraordinary. If you enjoyed exploring the life and work of Mary Ellen Mark, you will love learning about Joel Marowitz. See you in the next video.